The Yankees have set the rotation for the American League Championship Series, and today we're breaking down the Yankees' options. Aaron Boone already announced the schedule, the rotation. We'll break down each starter. We'll talk about how they're going to be aligned, not just for their first time through the rotation, but based on the off days and the rest schedule, kind of how the Yankees will be able to pitch them uh, for a second time through, uh, and, and talk about all of that and more matchups, data, everything and anything that could possibly pertain to this series and the Yankees starters for this series. We'll talk about all that and more. But before we do so, make sure you guys like, comment, subscribe, and turn the notification bell. It greatly helps the YouTube page. It helps us grow. It helps our videos get to more people. And you guys will get notifications on when we post if you guys click that notification bell and subscribe. With that being said, you guys can check us out on Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, Facebook, and of course this YouTube page. All under the handle at Fireside Yankees, except for Instagram, where it's at Fireside.Yankees. The links to everything will be in the description. And without further ado, let's get into today's video. Let's get it started talking about the Yankees' Game 1 starter, and that'll be Carlos Rodon. Carlos Rodon posted a 3.96 ERA on the season with a 26.5% strikeout rate, a 7.7% walk rate, and a 4.39 fit. He had relatively average run prevention, but he improved in the second half where he put up a 2.91 ERA and struck out 30% of batters faced. The pitch that helped him resurge and kind of become the pitcher that we hoped he would be when we first signed him was the changeup a pitch that has great vertical and velocity separation off of his fastball. The key for him having success against a Cleveland lineup that has plenty of success against left-handed batters is to make sure he incorporates the changeup and doesn't just get too happy with the fastball and slider. He talked about it in his media availability session today, referring to the fact that he will try to mix in more changeups and avoid being just a four-seam slider kind of guy. The Cleveland Guardians are a really good team against left-handed pitching. I wasn't particularly a fan of the decision to make Rodon the Game 1 starter over Clark Schmidt because it ensures that Rodon will pitch Games 1 and 5. And considering that, again, the Guardians are really good against left-handed pitching, they have the best record in baseball against left-handed starters at 29-11. and 11. They also have uh, the fifth-best WRC Plus among uh, all rosters in terms of active rosters, so players currently on their ALDS roster. Uh uh, in terms of WRC plus at 123 against lefties, they kill lefties. The, the best way to put this is they hit the ball really well against lefties. Jose Ramirez had the third best WRC plus in baseball against left-handed pitchers behind Aaron Judge and Tyler O'Neill. He's he's just a killer, and he's already very difficult to get out. So giving him at the advantage of hitting from the left-handed or the right-handed side only makes things more difficult for the Yankees. With that being said, Rodon does have good numbers against uh, the Guardians in his career. Granted, that doesn't really matter too much to me, and it doesn't have too much signal because of the fact that those are previous Guardians teams. He didn't pitch against them this year. It would be a little weird to use data from the 2021 and 2022 seasons when those players currently aren't on the 2021-2024 Guardians. And furthermore, Rodon is obviously a different pitcher than he was back then. Focusing on this specific start, though, uh, the Yankees need to make sure, again, that Rodon is mixing everything up. Fastballs up and into righties, uh, changeups down and away, fastballs up away against lefties, pound the slider and fastball combination. Against righties, get the slider down and into the back foot. He's going to have to mix things up, get some curveballs in, do whatever he can to keep these guys off balance because, again, they see left-handed pitching really, really well. I also think it's important for him to attack with the fastball up and into righties. I know I talked about that a little bit, but I think it'll brush him off the plate. That's kind of the one spot where Ramirez has somewhat of a weak hole, a weakness. Uh, sometimes he can get beat with some good velo up and in. Uh, so that's something I would also uh, emphasize to Rodon. Going up in game two will be Garrett Cole. And I don't think there's much that has to be said about Garrett Cole. He put up a 3.41 ERA this year, a 25.4% strikeout rate, a 7.4% walk rate, and a 3.69 FIP. Over his last 15 starts, he put up a 2.90 ERA, a 26.6% strikeout rate, a 6.8% walk rate, and a 3.09 FIP. He's throwing a sinker now. Uh, he's throwing it a little more aggressively as the starts have gone on. We saw it uh, pretty heavily in his final start of the year against Baltimore. He pitched pretty well in that outing. We saw that in his most recent start against the Royals in the uh, game four of the ALDS. He pitched really well in that start. Um, that pitch paired with his cutter and his four-seamer um, are capable of really throwing off batters because they see it uh, and they read it uh, at, similarly out of the hand until they finally start moving in various directions uh, as they approach the plate. Those pitch are going to help him throw off hitters. The Guardians are not a high swing and miss team, so he's not going to be able to punch out batters left and right. He'll have to rely on his ability to limit damage contact and suppress damage contact in order for him to have success. 
His curveball's been a really good pitch for him. I think that's a pitch he needs to mix in as much as possible because of the firm dropping action. A lot of guys in the Guardians have level swings. If you want to beat a level swing, you throw something with good vertical movement. Uh, good vertical movement means that guys are either A, going to swing over it, or B, chop it into the ground, or C, hit it in the air for a weak pop-up. Cole has thrown his knuckle curveball a lot this year. It's been a really good pitch for him. I hope it continues to be that because if so, he will dominate in this start. He is obviously a very pivotal part of this rotation, and he'll be set up to go in games two and game six uh, based on the rest days if he wants to go into a rest. The Yankees could also have him pitch in game seven if they decided to push him back from game six, depending on the situation. I don't think they would do that. They didn't push Cole back for a game five in the ALDS because it makes no sense to uh, throw away a chance to win the game in front of you to prepare for the game after. You win the games that are in front of you. So it'll be games two and game six, most likely. Moving on to their game three starter, this is going to be Clark Schmidt. Now, Clark Schmidt at 2.85 ERA this year, a 26.3% strikeout rate, an 8.5% walk rate, a 3.58 FIP, and he was super aggressive this year with his cutter. His cutter usage was awesome. He was able to throw it upstairs for a lot of swings and misses. The Guardians struggle against right-handed cutters, so it's imperative that Clark Schmidt is able to throw it upstairs and to the first base side to righties or attack up and into lefties. He's got to stay aggressive with breaking ball usage. The Guardians are very good against uh, right-handed fastballs. Not so good against right-handed breaking balls. Uh, they're a lineup that just doesn't really hit right-handed pitching well in general. So if you're Clark Schmidt, be aggressive, attack the zone. Do not put guys on unnecessarily. The pitch that I think could be a difference maker for him is his sinker. It was his worst pitch throughout the regular season. It's a pitch I usually advise against him throwing aggressively. And I'm not advising for him to throw it a ton. I'm not advising for him to use it as primary pitch. But I have noticed that since coming back from the injured list, He's got about over an inch more of horizontal run on it. It went from averaging around 10 and a half inches of horizontal break to around 12. Um, and it's going to potentially be a pitch that could help him uh, if he throws it down and into righties or he tries to um, backdoor it. Uh, he could try to do a front hip sinker to lefties. We've seen that have some success. Uh, if that could be a pitch he could use you know, with a runner on to try to uh, get an easy ground ball, that would help. Uh, the Guardians are aggressive, they will swing, uh, and they put the ball in play a good bit. So if he's able to neutralize their power a little bit and keep them on the ground, that would certainly help because that could turn some double plays. And if the Guardians are not going to strike out as much as they usually do, uh, which they don't strike out a lot, you know, if they're going to continue not striking out, then it's going to be imperative for Schmidt to control the batted ball game. Going in game four will be Luis Seal. Now, Luis Seal, he has a pitch in postseason. He had a 3.50 ERA this year with a 26.8% strikeout rate. The big thing for him was his 12.1% walk rate. He walked a lot of guys. Uh, the key to his success is going to be fastballs inside, forcing hitters to beat him. Uh, and that's inside to righties and lefties. If he's attacking on that side of the plate, he's going to make it very difficult for them to, uh, number one, see the ball late, track it, and shoot the other way because he gets a decent amount of run. He has a ton of extension. He releases from a super wide release point. There are a lot of things that play into his fastball characteristics that make it a really tough pitch to beat once it's thrown inside. Furthermore, he's going to have to execute the slider away to righties and into lefties. Now, why into lefties? Well, that has to do with his wide release point again. Uh, because he releases from such a wide slot, it makes his slider even more devastating when thrown specifically on the first base side of the plate. He releases it super close to the third base side of the, uh, of the mound relative to other pitchers. Uh, and it makes it hard to track. There, it's it's really a, a high swing pitch. Uh, and a high swing pitch when it's thrown out of zone is a high whiff pitch. So you're trying to coax swings. You're trying to get batters to swing. And I think that's where Heel's going to have the most success, getting batters to expand the zone. First changeup, which I still think is an important pitch in his repertoire. It's a great secondary. Into righties, away from lefties. Uh, if he's able to keep, you know, just not locating well, but throwing his pitch in the right lanes. I think that's the best way to put it. He'll have a ton of success in this game. But let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. What are your predictions? What do you think is going to happen? All of that and more. And we'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out, Yankee fans. Let's go, Yankees. Perfect. Perfect.